Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another edition or another episode of Hokkaido Outdoor Trips. Today, I wonder how many kilometers I will end up driving. It's another day trip. It's about 7.40 a.m. Little earlier start for this trip. Not that early, but, you know, earlier than our prior trips. The goal today is to get to a place called Etambetsu. It's a small village a little further north from the Hokkaido central city of Asahikawa. There is a dairy farm there called Ise Farm, and they make some amazing milk and some amazing soft cream. So we're going to head up there and eat some of their delicious ice cream. All right. We're in the car, we are out of the city, on the highway, making our way north towards Asahikawa. Kashimiya-chan is excited, knowing that she's going to get to eat some ice cream. Safia hiding behind some pillows, and Sienna, cool as always. The driving is smooth, it's nice on the highway, not many cars out. Here we are, a little cloudy. We stop at one of the many uh, parking areas along the highway and have some snacks. We brought a lot of food with us as well, as always. Easy that way to eat in the car or wherever we end up stopping to take some breaks. We get off the highway at the Asahikawa Takasu Interchange. This is the main off-ramp for the city of Asahikawa. But we don't go into the city of Asahikawa. We are gonna head a little further north, another 20, maybe 30 minutes max from Asahikawa to the small town of Etambetsu. Etambetsu is a place with a lot of farming. There are a bunch of dairy farms up there and we are heading to Ise Farm. Uh, our cafe and ice cream shop in Sapporo, we actually get our soft cream mix from Ise Farm. That's how I know about the place. And I've been there only once before. So this time I decided to bring the family and have them experience what it's like there. And of course, eat some really, really good ice cream. So here we are. There is their family house and there is the small shop and factory where they make not only soft ice cream, but they also do a really good blue cheese. And one member of the family also makes some really amazing sausages. The store is called Cow and Calf and right there in the field, there are the cows. These are the cows responsible for that delicious soft cream. They have 18 cows, a mix of different types. Some Holsteins, some uh, Swiss, uh, what are they called? Mm, I forget the name right now. Beautiful cows, 18 in total, very happy, grass fed, out there in the fields. And this is, uh, Ise-san's wife, she runs the soft cream end of the business, and she has been doing this for about 20 years. She's really, really good at making those soft creams. As in, like, you have to, you know how you have to twist them around and kind of get that really cool soft ice cream shape? Well, you'll see it in a minute. She's really good. But here's their menu, very simple. A mini is 200 yen, regular size 300, and a large size 350 yen. Of course, we got the large size. We drove all the way up there, right? Check it out. Here's what the big size looks like. Isn't that amazing? She's so good. Perfect. Perfect consistency. Perfect shape. They use a Carpigiani, Italian soft cream machine. And that was a, a big influence on us when we decided to choose the same brand machine for our ice cream shop. It makes a really creamy, really smooth, soft ice cream. So we all got our very large ice creams. And then we went out to the benches they have there and watched those cows chilling on the grass and had a really good chat with the owner of the farm, uh, Mr. Yeah. Ise himself. Mm. Cows be chilling. 
chilling. Apparently, uh, they were up early eating a lot of grass, and then they all sort of like take a break. And cows, you know, that I guess they have four stomachs, so they kind of regurgitate a lot of that grass that they eat, and they sort of chew on it while they chill on the grass there. We talked to uh, Mr. Ise, who owns the farm. He's been in Etan Bezo for about 40 years. And uh, he was a really, really nice guy and obviously very knowledgeable about cows and dairy farming. He told us all kinds of interesting stuff. Apparently, when dairy farms uh, try to increase their production and get really big and bring in a lot of cows, they have to do things like cutting the horns off of the cows and even going so far as to cutting the tails off of the cows. Uh, and it's not for the cows. It doesn't make their life any easier. It's all for the people who run the farms and making the running of the farm easier. So obviously we learned a lot about dairy farming and uh, some of it was kind of sad to hear, but very happy to hear that his cows all have horns and tails and they're happy out there eating grass in the fields. Of course, I uh, busted out the drone, did a little flight. It wasn't the greatest weather, it was a little cloudy, but it was nice to see the surrounding hills and fields. Etambetsu is a really beautiful area with uh, these wide open grassy spaces and then these kind of low rolling hills, rivers kind of winding through the, the fields. Thanks to Isei-san for sharing his knowledge with us and letting us stop by and talk to him for a while. Please visit Cow and Calf in Etambetsu for some really good soft ice cream. Obviously, we got a little bit of a sugar high going on from all that delicious ice cream drew some pictures on the road with chalk and Safia was trying a new challenge drawing a picture you know, while okay. riding a skateboard multiple talents going on oh, there yeah. so then we had to go back and have one more ice cream can you believe it we couldn't get enough I'm telling you it is so good it is so delicious it's not as sweet as many other soft ice creams out there, so it doesn't make you thirsty. So, well, okay, I'm making excuses. We just wanted to eat another soft ice cream. Thanks again to the cows. Look at them, they're just chilling. We're back in the van. It's time to go find a spot for lunch. All right, it was a pleasure to stop by the farm and get to see Etambetsu. We found a cool little park right there in the village itself. Busted out the camp kitchen, had some curry, enjoyed a little time in the park there. We had it all to ourselves, really nice. So after this, we actually ended up driving to Higashikawa. I met up with some friends, we did a little shopping, and then it started raining. So didn't really film anything and didn't do much else that day. It was time to head back to Sapporo. I decided to make some coffee right there at the back of the van. And then it was back on the highway. Time to head home. Mm. Mm. That was a pretty good coffee. So, Captain's Log, I think I did a total of 358 kilometers driving on this day. Quite a bit of driving for a day trip, but it was worth it. That ice cream was really good, and the family was happy. Thanks for following along on our trips as always. Hokkaido Outdoor Trips will be back with another day trip. And soon we'll be getting into the camping season and some overnight trips. Look forward to that. Thanks as always and see you on the next episode.